Hey, coming up right now, a woman buys a perfect wedding dress. Now, if there were just a man for her to marry and maybe even a wedding day? We'll get to that in just a moment. And later, Snoop Dogg reveals a huge phobia and he's not horsing around. Also on today's show, we're going to tell you how a t-shirt can actually change lives and help many, many people. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. I promise you we've got a great show uh, set up for you today. Yeah. But before we kick things off, I want to tell you about uh, the T-shirt that I'm wearing today. It's the Every Step is a Finish Line T-shirt, and it draws inspiration from founder Richie McPeak. He's a true warrior. Matt and I are both wearing them, yep. and to show our support, he's a true warrior battling leiomyosarcoma over the past nine years. Now, his journey serves as a powerful reminder that life's challenges don't always define us. It's how we face them that actually matters. So when you actually wear an Every Step is a Finish Line clothing article, there's my bud, Aww. you become part of a supportive community that not only with every purchase, you're gonna be making a really big difference. When you get your own shirt, you support that enables them to fund vital sarcoma research and provide assistance to amputee veterans. Get yours today and help a cause that can make a difference. And if you want to check out their whole clothing line, just go to everystepisafinishline.com and uh, make a big difference here. As I said, uh, I, I know Richie personally. I've known him since high school. And this is something that he wanted to leave a mark. And it's something truly that he has lived. Uh, this guy is a, a true warrior and in, in, in faced many obstacles. And for the past nine years, battling the sarcoma, I've never seen him down about it at all. He just always has a positive attitude about it. Yeah, I just always remember Richie as being this big, huggable, likable, <laughs> funny guy. A yeah. big bear. Always had a funny story. Always had a funny smile. And I promise you, the best laugh. Yeah. My right, yeah. Matt, the no, best absolutely. laugh of yeah. a human being you'll ever find is, is on Richie. And so uh, our thoughts are out to him uh, as he battles this, as well as his family, and showing our support all morning long. Every step is a finish line. Go just check out the website right now. Get one for your own. And they, he also made a big effort to help veterans that are amputees. He lost his, one of his uh, legs uh, because of cancer, but there's veterans that he's actually gone and, you know, that have, have come back from serving us and, and needed, uh, you know, prosthetics. So he does this, and this is not something he takes very lightly. He's very headstrong in it. So and I'm, his I'm social, really proud of him. His social the whole time, if you guys go back and look, I'm sure there's a link on the website where, you know, he, he was very inspirational, keeping it yes. going. He worked out every day while going through these treatments. All the I time. mean, it, it was really amazing. All right. Terrific legacy that he, yes. he leaves. Great way you to know, say that. And a, and a great amount of positivity coming through all of that. Well, someone's trash just became another person's treasure. An Alabama woman was shopping at her local Goodwill store when she stumbled upon a stunning wedding gown she just couldn't resist. Despite having having no plans on getting married anytime soon. <laughs> she just had to have it. She paid 25 bucks for the dress before okay. later finding out the couture design was worth a jaw-dropping $6,200. Wow. The bargain shopper showed off her glamorous second-hand find on social media. The V-neck stunner features lace, pearl, and rhinestones, and of course her video went viral with millions of views. I love that. That's the kind of woman you want to marry. She's ready. <laughs> you know, first off, got for $25, dress. you ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> Second true. thing, I, I, you lived in San Diego. Yeah. We'd go up to La Jolla and, oh, and yeah. go to their thrift stop because these rich people, man, they'll, they'll, they'll just donate it like at the end of the year. And I got so many good items that it's way. It true. Sounds like one of they those. like to clean out those closets yes. and they don't care what they're getting. <laughs> right, <up. laughs> right, exactly. I'm going to send my fiance there or out to uh, to Windermere, the fancy town around here, and tell her, babe, go find yours That's around there. That's what you do. You really yes. can. Yeah. You really, you, you, and you have to be uh, in Winter Park, they have a boutique, a Goodwill boutique. Yes, you got to check right. out. But well, it's yeah, a little you're pricier. going there. It, it is pricier. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and they have these weird, in the Goodwills, it's like, if it has a red tag, it's ten, it's 50% off, like yeah. on a certain day. So you have to go there, and they're smart. They're like, go there each day. What you might like yesterday probably won't be there tomorrow, but if it is, it'll be at a different price sometimes. Really we cool. We love that. Andre, I don't know if you, uh, I don't think you're actually going to be hanging out with Snoop Dogg anytime soon. The, the one time I remember he hit on you. <laughs> yeah, and he, uh, and he invited me to his Snoop DQ. Yes, that's that's a true story. You didn't go? I still have the message. <laughs> yeah, he did. I still have the voice she message. Did. I go, get out of town. <laughs> we had so much fun listening we to did. that one a long time ago. All right, well, anyway, 
You might not be as happy when I tell you the fact that he has a fear of horses. No, come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it would have never worked. It would never have worked anyway. 51-year-old rapper, he admitted he's an equinophobia. That's what he has. The Death Row Records owner revealed that his wife owned a horse for three years. She rode it for peace and enjoyment. Snoop refused to interact with the horse and preferred to keep his distance. Now, Snoop does not know the reason behind his phobia. He does understand the allure of horses and is open to finding ways to overcome his fear. Oh, your best fear is just to go up there. They're such gentle creatures. Yeah. They do have a communication. I know that uh, kids with autism, mm -hmm. somehow horses know they have it mm -hmm. and they have this connect. It's really weird, yeah. really weird how they can do that. At, at the barn, there are a couple of, of kids that used to ride uh, that were autistic and they would take lessons two, three times a week and it was perfect therapy for them. Right. And it's amazing because they're so sensitive. They just pick up on the, things that we can't even the horse imagine. And, and probably Snoop's always high and he probably doesn't know what his emotion is. And that's <laughs> The horse like so. picks up on it, right? I would think him being a high probably is a good thing if he's around horses because it relaxes you. Do I get to say it? I've been waiting yeah. all morning. Yeah. Well, Snoop can get off his high horse. Ha <laughs> 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 See, I see my dad. See, hi. I knew you did that. Hi, hi. Are, you here, are you here all week? <laughs> no, yeah, try the veal, Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Slow clap. We're in the scallop room. Thanks, ladies. <laughs> the scallop room. <laughs> Well, we told you about media company Gannett looking for a Taylor Swift reporter. P.S. They've hired one. Uh, now the publisher of USA Today wants to hire a dedicated Beyonce correspondent. The company is looking for a writer who will chronicle the music, fashion, cultural, and economic influence of Beyonce. Well, according to the listing, which is the exact same copy as the Taylor Swift ad, the reporter will identify how the star's influence continues to expand, and their work will be featured in the Tennessean and USA Today. The company wants a candidate with at least five years of journalism experience and the position will pay up to fifty thousand dollars that ain't bad for journalism no. uh, especially for print journalism so and you, and imagine you probably get access yeah. uh more access than than other people might because you're dedicated just on her yeah so the taylor swift position has been filled by a guy who used to work for the new york post and oh, so okay. he just posted his experience so far first week on the job he's like it's non-stop i've got to come up with taylor swift gossip every single day see i don't know if i'd want to be that concentrated on right. something you yeah. know I mean there there is a certain amount where it could be a, a benefit but then there would be like I got to come up with crap. I got to figure out, hey, yeah. she cut her toenails today. Uh, you know, who cares? But there are people who care yes. that she cut her toenails. Yeah, he lives in New York, and he, he basically what he does is he wakes up, and he's got to figure out where Taylor Swift will be today. And oh if she's God. in New York, he has to hang out in the restaurant she goes to or in the neighborhood she goes to. I, I, I would imagine there's going to be a point. Did they have, like, an expiration date on this? Was it, was it just, like, for the, the Beyonce tour? one is brand new. But, uh, but so, I mean, like, okay, oh, they were going to cover it, only no, on the tour I, only? I think, I think it's permanent. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then we, how would you, as a, as a celebrity, knowing that, that there's going to be one person that will concentrate only on you, it'd be kind of weird. It'd be really weird. Yeah. But you would get kind of close to that person, I would so. imagine, because that person would know so much about you. And then you would try to hide mm -hmm. somewhat, or at least as much as you can. I don't think I'll ever get to that point, so I think I'll be all right. <laughs> All righty, let's jump into something that's with us, mm -hmm. saving our planet. And this is some tips and ideas that you can do so. An increasing number of consumers want companies to actually be transparent and their relationship with the environment. So we here at KSA Entertainment feel the same way. We mm -hmm. want to bring you stories on how we, as a planet, can work together to help sustain the earth for our kids and our grandkids. So we have 10 choices that you can actually make for a healthier planet. First off, as we jump in, reduce, reuse, and recycle. It's really simple. Just cut down on what you throw away. That's a good point. Uh, also, volunteer. Volunteer for cleanups in your community. If you live near a beach, this is a perfect opportunity. Near a river, uh, they all need cleanup. I would agree with that. And anytime you concentrate on something else, you forget your problems. You know, sure, if you that's notice a great that. point. So another way you could do that is educate. A lot of us have specific things that we know about. Maybe it's Taylor Smith, maybe it's Beyonce. Maybe it's like, you know, being a better person. <laughs> Well, when you educate, get in front of many people as you can to just listen and keep that in mind. Learning is listening as well when you educate. Uh, conserve water. I mean, you can do this in a number of ways. Maybe you turn the water off when you're brushing your teeth, or maybe you just don't leave it running as long. You know, there's different kinds of ways you can do it that don't inconvenience you. Uh, you want to choose sustainable items. And this is easy to look for when you buy something. If it comes in all this packaging and you see something that is maybe cardboard or recycled, choose that. 
Uh, yeah, sh uh, shop wisely, also use long-lasting light bulbs, plant a tree. That's a great idea. You would not believe the difference a tree can make. Also, don't send chemicals into our waterway, oh, meaning yes. like if you're going to clean your, your, your driveway, yeah. try to find something that is actually organic, that's not going to have non -toxic. any Non-toxic. And bike for, and uh, bike more and drive less. Are they talking about motorcycles, Trout? Is that no? Yes. Oh, actual bikes. Bicycles. It's kind of hot out. So. Lately, bicycles. though, these electric bikes, is that safe? I mean, is no. that, that go? That no. Does it. So, no. No. I agree. No. no. Use your feet. <laughs> we want to see y'all exercise in easy ways. Have some ideas? Let us know. That's true. Stay with us. Still more to come here on Daily Flash. Don't go anywhere and check out the website, dailyflashshow.com. Share with us your yes. environmental tips. Sure. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Dealing with parents who lie to you, what do you do? The question stems from the trending Kurt Franklin story about finding his father. Now in it, his mother lies to him repeatedly. And it wasn't until he actually was presented DNA evidence that she came clean all about his dad. Yeah, and here to talk about how kids should handle a parent lying to them is relationship trauma expert, Dr. Janie Lacey. Janie, good to see you. Glad to be here. All right, this is a big deal. I mean, we were talking about this last week. A lot of people wrote, wrote in about it. About first, there's several different elements of this. is parental rights, children's rights mm -hmm. as well. What would you say if you had Kirk Franklin right here to help him actually handle this situation? knowing that he never knew his father was just living just minutes away from him because his mm -hmm. mother held that information back from his whole life. You know, the first thing I would say to Kurt is that you're brave. It takes boldness and it takes someone brave to go after their own story to make sense of who they are, why they do the things that they do, why do they think the things that they struggle with and to go and not, not only go after it, but to share it with the world yeah. because so many people, this is their story, but he has the platform to share his story and everyone else that's relating to that. He's opened a lot of conversations up as a result of that documentary. There has to be a serious trust issue at play here mm -hmm. when we talk about long-term effects of a parent lying to a child. When you think about a child, our parents are our first introduction to relationships and life. So when you find out that your parent has been lying to you or potentially lying to you, it rocks your world. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be questioning things. You're probably not gonna even trust yourself, especially depending on your age and your stage of your life. So it damages because it's part of what we call a template in psychology. Our parents are downloading information about who we are in our template. So our very first relationships, our mom and our dad, and especially if they're our caregivers, mm -hmm. and if they're lying to us and then we are relying on them for information about the world, about who we are. It takes a lot of undoing to get to a place of healing, first understanding what has happened. And it's usually when you're an adult and then you are usually become a parent, you kind of understand uh, you're on that next phase. I would imagine that that, that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. We do these lies all the time. Some people call them white lies. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody knocks at the door, tell them I'm not here, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, those sort of things. Are they detrimental or are they also part of that step to where eventually you might be holding back something bigger? Are they the gateway drug? A gateway <laughs> lie. Yes, a gateway lie. <laughs> what we look at is a death by a thousand cuts, right? So I have a son. So if my son saw me telling a lot of little white lies, it's it's also giving him permission to do the same. Yeah. But the how he interprets that would be different than me thinking, oh, just you know, tell him I'm not here, I'll get to it later, and I'm just thinking it's nothing. But from his state, he's he's taking every he's, all he's that taking information, all yeah. of that information in to understand how he's gonna operate into the world. And it is a lot challenging when we're now an adult and we grew up telling a lot of white lies, and mm -hmm. now we're trying to be in relationships <laughs> or jobs, or we tweaking that one thing on the resume, right? We're gonna get into a lot of challenges in adulthood if we don't understand. I guess my question is, even presented with the DNA evidence, the mom still wasn't really forthcoming about mm -hmm. who the dad was and why she why she did not right. introduce the mm -hmm. two. So why why do you think she was withholding that information? This is actually very common when someone is unhealed and they have a lot of shame uh, that they are stored. Uh, they would rather uh, hold on to a lie and die with that lie because it's so much more painful to tell the truth and to come out with what really the reality is. So it's actually very common when people get stunted and they, they, they stay stuck in whatever narrative they have been operating from. But there's a lot Be of shame that happens. Because that's working for them. 
So again, they're it's comfortable working with for it. them, and to say that I've made a mistake or say that I've lied, well, I'm saying there's yeah. something wrong with me. When we're looking at shame versus guilt in like particular. That. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, you think yeah. it'd be mm -hmm. freeing though? Like she'd want to yeah. get that off of her chest. She'd want that off her shoulders. If she was healthy, if she did her healing work and she was healthy. All yeah. right, lifecounselingsolutions.com. Janie Lacey, thank you so much for joining us. You always bring such great, great commentary as well as great advice as well. If you want to find out more information, just check out Janie's uh, site at lifecounselingsolutions.com. Well, Americans love fall, they love football and fun, and that includes the good old-fashioned tailgate party to cheer on their favorite team. And who knows more about tailgate party tips than a former NFL player and seasoned chef Mark Schlereth. What do you have for us, Mark? Hey, welcome. Hey, when it comes to the football season, it's all about watching the game. It's all about being with family and friends. And when you're talking about watching the game, it's always best on LG OLED C3 TV, the GOAT of TV's bright colors, crisp pictures, LG OLED celebrated as the best TV by experts worldwide. Whether you're watching movies, you're gaming, watching football like me, it's always better on LG OLED C3 TV from 42 to 83 inches. You can get all the information you need at LG.com. Then Butterball's Hearty Turkey Sausage Links. Delicious, guys. Perfect for game day. They're pre-cooked. They heat on the grill in minutes. Robust flavors. You can serve it on a toasty bun or saute it with your favorite vegetables. Your people are going to love it. That's Butterball.com for recipes and more information. And then how about dessert? Everybody loves dessert. What if you break out a ice cream cake at the half for your family and friends? Wow. Carville ice cream cakes. You can find it in the local grocery department. The bakery freezer case right there for you. Check out the game ball cake. I'm telling you what, your people are going to love it. For a limited time, now through the Super Bowl, that's the game ball cake. You can find out more information at iloveicecreamcakes.com. And I'm telling you, when it comes to the football season, so many great storylines. One of the reasons we celebrate this game so much. Obviously, you've got Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes defending their championship. There's nobody better than him. But I look at the Jets, that storyline, they had a top five defense last year without great quarterback pay play now enter Aaron Rodgers I mean how's it going to get any better than that and then when I look at the NFC in general obviously the Philadelphia Eagles I think their roster construction from top to bottom they're so physical they're so good I think the same way about the San Francisco 49ers should be a great football season and the thing about this time of year everybody's got a chance enjoy the 2023 football season thank you Mark hey there's one at Florida tourist locations actually getting a new resident that has a stiff upper lip or maybe not we'll tell you all about it it's an interesting story hey welcome back to daily flash the concours d'elegance auto show in pebble beach took place recently and the car coach lauren fix was there to find out and show us all the cool cars <laughs> get you dukes <laughs> What's it like to be selling the most expensive cars in the world? Well, we got an inside sneak peek at the Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance and Monterey Car Week and my favorite, the auctions are the biggest highlights of the summer car events. The concentration of car obsessed rich people at Pebble Beach showing, buying, and selling some of the most rare and special vehicles in the world sets the mark for collector car prices and showcases the best of the best cars in the world. For me, the auctions are the highlight of the week-long event. The Monterey Car Week auctions conclude Saturday with the second highest total in Car Week history. The 1,200 plus vehicles in 150 plus $1 million vehicles offered across five auctions resulted in a total sales of $396.7 million and a sell-through rate of 68%, which means 68% of those vehicles were sold. The others will go on to be sold at other auctions or in other private events. The cooling market we've observed for the past 15 months finally has reached the Monterey auctions after having little impact last year. This is based on the economy and what's going on around the world. Haggerty Automotive Intelligence is hearing of several factors stemming from the first season of Monterey auctions in a full inflationary environment, namely an increased discipline at the higher end of the market, which means expensive cars, are not necessarily selling as quickly as they did, and the weakening demand from new collectors, 
which certainly has deterred people from investing in anything, and higher prices that have given pause to buyers at the upper end of the market. The top of the market has proven resilient until recently, as Ferrari prototype race cars from the 60s have begun to slow. Sometimes they're just very hard to locate these cars, and so you want to make sure to take these opportunities if you have the cash. Bonhams sold a 1967 Ferrari 412P for $30.2 million, which left observers wondering why it didn't get more bids. Typically, that type of vehicle would sell for more. RM Sotheby's offered a 1964 Ferrari 250 Le Mans on Saturday, which didn't sell on a high bid of $17 million. They were expecting to earn $20 million for this vehicle, so it will return at another auction. Gooding and Company sold a 1962 Ferrari 250 GT short wheelbase coupe, and it sold for $9.4 million. Overall, through Saturday, all auction companies, including Mecham, had a cumulative total of $396.7 million in sales. The auctions offered 1,225 vehicles and sold at 68% sell-through rate with an average price of about $474,000. That's less than the 2022 cumulative results for Monterey Car Week, which had a cumulative total of $472.8 million, somewhere around $72 million more a higher sell-through rate of 78%, and an average sale rate of $591,000 on average per vehicle. That's a lot more than we had for this year. What does this mean? This means that a collector car market is off by about 10%. This means it's a great time to buy and a horrible time to sell a collector car. If you're considering attending next year's Monterey Car Week, the traditional events include Pebble Beach Tour de Elegance, the Quail a Motorsports Gathering, the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion, and the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, plus all the other exciting auctions. There is so much to do. It is a very busy week. And if you love cars, add the third week of August in Northern California to your bucket list. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com. Thanks, Lauren. Great info. I actually would love to go to that event. So in our furry friends this week, though we call them our furry friends, special animals come in all shapes, sizes, and scales, just like this little girl here. Over at Gatorland in Orlando, along with the help of our friend Savannah, they announced that Gatorland Global rescued this little female alligator who lost her complete upper jaw. They believe from an either a gator attack when she was younger or recently maybe have been hit by a boat. They believe she survived by slopping up frogs and snails and other animals that didn't put up much of a fight, but she wouldn't have lasted long in the wild, much longer without some help. So Gatorland has brought her into her new forever home and is now getting cared for by eating all the chicken she wants. They're currently looking for a name for the unique gator. And if you head to their social media, you can add your own suggestion. And that's our furry friends today. And there's so much more news and entertainment, everything in between coming up right here on Daily Flash. What is KSA Entertainment? It's trending news, entertainment, lifestyle, KSA Entertainment, culture, yes. it's love, it's food, it's family, KSA. it's life, it's shopping, it's empowerment, KSA, KSA Entertainment, it's fitness, it's travel, KSA, it's fun, it's engaging, it's Daily Flash, Daily Flash Latino, life, love, shopping. This is KSA Entertainment. is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. So, Costco has some competition. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Have you heard about this new place that Skechers has just opened? Uh, the shoe people? Yeah, no, the shoe not. people. Uh -uh. So, they've opened a Costco-style concession stand outside 
of their shoe store. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're like hot dogs, like the concession stands, hot like dogs, at Costco. Okay. Yeah. All beef dogs for two fifty. Pepperoni pizza slices for three bucks. Premium soft serve and fresh churros for three bucks. I've heard of people going to Costco and never walking inside and eating now eating the hot dogs is that good. Buck fifty. Yeah. It's the best best lunch bargain in town. Home Depot's doing it. Now yeah, as well, it's not the same it's though. Not, it's not now, the same. Now, Skechers says the, the plus for them is that you don't have to have a membership. Whereas if you go to Costco, yeah. you have to have a membership even to buy the hot dogs and the Coke. It's called uh, the spot, the food spot. Okay, here's something. So uh, two weeks ago, we would go to Costco. But the the in-laws came down and uh, they wanted to go to Costco because we could get gas, right? Uh, I always get my gas at Costco. Okay, but the lines were like like crazy yes, long. Yeah. I, I, but and it's usually like what five cents cheaper. Is it more than that? 10, 15 cents. Okay, cheaper, well, depends, all right, yeah. 15, all right, 15 cents I can get. Okay. But if it's only five cents, I don't feel like waiting in line. I'd spend the amount of money. Cause, well, you figure if you get 10 gallons, you're only yeah. saving 50 cents. But to me, it's a safety factor. Because if what? I go to Costco, I can trust that when my card goes in that machine, I'm all right. It hasn't been hacked. It, I, it's, okay. I'm getting the same gas every time I go. Well, see, when I put my card in anything, I'm waiting for it to go. <laughs> There's no money in there. <laughs> I thought that's where you were headed. That's the case. All right, well, all right. So with Sketch. Do you want Sketches. to eat a Skechers hot dog? Doesn't that sound like kind of like a sketchy hot dog? Slip on your shoes and get a hot dog. Yeah, it, well, it, well, it tastes like the sole of my shoe. <laughs> your oh. hot dogs are rubbery. Yeah, hot dogs are rubbery. So, all right, well. That's the food spot. That's what it's called. I won't knock it until I try it. There you that. go. Um, all right, so we told you about a media company. Uh, Gannett looking for a Taylor Swift reporter. Now the publisher of USA Today wants to hire a dedicated Beyonce correspondent. The company is looking for a writer who will chronicle the music, fashion, cultural, and economic influence of Beyonce. Now, according to the listing, which is the exact same copy as the Taylor Swift ad, the reporter will identify how the star's influence continues to expand and how their work will be featured in the Tennessean and USA Today. The company wants a candidate with at least five years of journalism experience, and the position will pay up to fifty thousand dollars. You were mentioning that Taylor Swift already has uh, that reporter. Yes, yeah, so they've hired. already filled the position for the Taylor Swift correspondent. He's a guy who used to work for the New York Post. So I'm guessing they're going to find somebody who's got a little bit of cachet. It, it seems like they would have to. Yeah. She's, uh, because you figure not only you would get also uh, pull in a Jay Z. Yeah. And, and then also the, their industries mm -hmm. that they both did. Not that tr Taylor Smith. Uh, Taylor Smith. Taylor <laughs> Swift. That's a different. See, that's why I didn't get the gig. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's a different it's a way different report. Way different report. <laughs> hey, what are you drinking? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I'd imagine that that person would really need to know a little bit more about businesses yeah. and that sort of thing. So we'll see. Yeah. Someone's trash it actually becomes another person's treasure. And no, we're not talking about ex-husbands and ex-wives. An Alabama woman was shopping at her local Goodwill when she actually stumbled across a stunning wedding gown that she couldn't resist. Listen, she had no plans on getting married anytime <laughs> soon, but she said, I got to get it. She paid $25 then found out it, uh, that the design was worth 6,200 bucks. Wow. The bargain shopper showed off her glamorous second hand find on social media. The V-neck stunner features lace, pearl, and rhinestones. Her video, video went viral with millions of views, and you can see why. Man, you ever had a good score like that? No, but I wish I was read those stories where somebody finds a really weird painting in, you know, Salvation Army or Goodwill, and they find out it's worth millions of dollars. Have you ever donated stuff and then seen it on the racks? <laughs> I have. I've, I've seen a guy really wearing great. my shirts really? down does it, the street. Do little yes. on the back. No, I just I recognize that Disney shirt. I'm like, no, I gave that away two weeks ago. <laughs> um, I had I had a hockey shirt that one of the hockey teams uh, when I uh, had made up for me, and I'm like, and, and I was a much bigger guy, and so then a hockey shirts already bigger. Yeah. This thing was like a. I was like, I can't have it anymore. I'm waiting to see somebody walking around with the <laughs> Peoria Rivermen English uh, 87 on the back, but not as of yet. Can be used as a drape, that's for sure. The one weird thing that happened to me is when I was 16, I wrecked my car, which, you know, is typical yeah, for a 16 sure. year old. And uh, the insurance company totaled it out. I saw a guy driving it two weeks later no on the street. <laughs> and I knew because it, it had my MTV bumper sticker still on it. I was like, oh my God, that's my car. That's awesome. I love it. More flash after this. All right, Mitch English here in the Flash Back Room. This year's North American Car, Truck, and Utility Vehicle of the Year's winners have been revealed. Jeff Gilbert, president of the NAC Toy Jury, has more. The Toyota Prius, Prius Prime, Ford Super Duty, and Kia EV9 earned top honors at the North American Car, Truck, and Utility Vehicle of the Year Awards. The prestigious awards recognize the most outstanding new vehicles of the year. These vehicles are considered the best in innovation, design, safety, handling, driver satisfaction, user experience, and value. Jeff Gilbert, president of the NACTOY Jury, explains. 
These were the awards given out by 50 automotive journalists for the best vehicles of 2024. And you talk about a diversity. You've got a work truck as a winner. You've got a battery EV as a winner. And you've got a plug-in hybrid and hybrid as a winner. So it covers the breadth of the auto industry. The car, truck, and utility award winners were chosen from a preliminary round of 52 eligible vehicles, narrowed to the 25 best of 2024 at the Detroit Auto Show in September. For more information on the NAC Toy winners and finalists, visit NorthAmericanCarOfTheYear.org. Hey, you at home, if you're in need of some credit help, we got some very helpful and useful information. Check it out. Freddie Mac announced the launch of its free Credit Smart Financial Education program in Spanish. The importance of having access to free, high-quality financial education resources in Spanish cannot be overstated because understanding how to build and improve credit lays the foundation for a successful home ownership experience. For more information, go to creditsmart.freddymac.com forward slash Espanol. Time to live it up, love it, and talk some shop. Well, if you've worked in a restaurant, you're likely familiar with the term 86. Oh, yeah, that's right. Me, me. Yep, meaning the item is no longer available. Now, a recent thread about secret bartender codes has everyone mixing up the Insider 411. There's something known as the area code scale. All right. This rates a customer on their looks from zero to <laughs> nine. The first number is the face, second is wood or wouldn't, and the third number ranks the body. So, for instance, if someone is a 719, they're hot. If they're a 303, not so much. <laughs> 919 is as perfect as you can get. Another bartender revealed that 300 is code for an attractive lady with a big bust. Here we are. And 900 is code for a guy who has hired company for the evening. Ah, okay. <laughs> 900 down the bar, right. seat seven. Gotcha. And, okay. she, and she looks like a 919. So yeah, very good, yes. Uh, bartenders have also been spreading the word about the angel shot. Benji Smith went viral with his TikTok video. The angel shot is a drink order reserved for someone who needs saving from a potential dangerous situation. Take a listen. Yeah, I'll do an angel shot with you guys, definitely, of course. With lime, definitely coming right up for sure. Hey, Tom, we're going to do some angel shots over here with lime. Demi Lovato posted the info on her Insta page. Uh, she's got this picture. It says, if you order your angel shot neat, it means you want someone to escort you out to okay. your car. If you order it dressed, someone will call you an Uber or a Lyft. And if you order it with lime, it means you want the bar to call the police. Okay, that's a picture I would imagine is in the women's bathroom. Because mm -hmm. if they put it up front, then the yeah, guy exactly. would go, well, you want to have one yeah. of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've seen those, I and mean, it's very smart, very, yeah. very smart, because generally in a bar situation, that is where it's very difficult to get off, and plus there's alcohol involved, and you don't know how to get out of the situation. Yeah, Ooh, and, cool. the, and that Benji Smith, the bartender yeah. there, you know, he sort of spotted uh, a couple, and he realized the woman didn't look like she was doing very well. So it's also kind of a thing, I think, where bartenders really pay attention to the social dynamics happening Oh, that makes bar. sense. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, any way to stay safe and also keep your yeah. eye on your drink always, too. I exactly. know that's a big, big thing. All right, we have more Daily Flash. You want to do some more? Yeah, I think so. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, if you do, you're going to miss out on the fun. And, of course, as always, you can always head to our website, dailyflashshow.com. Check all your things that we've seen here and shown on the show. You can actually find links and so much more. Where is it at? Right there on our website, dailyflashshow.com. As we look ahead to the new year, it's important to prioritize your physical and mental well-being, including making time for exercise. Planet Fitness's national lead trainer, Teddy Savage, is here to share tips and tricks to help keep you motivated and help everyone find their big fitness energy in the new year and beyond. Hi, thanks for having me. The new year really serves as an opportunity to really renew and refocus, making our mental health and our physical fitness our number one priority. And let's face it, we're all feeling the effects of the holiday season, whether it be through low energy or fatigue. But exercise can help you with both. When you move your body, you release endorphins from your brain that boost your mood and energy levels naturally, while at the same time reducing stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. And at Planet Fitness, we want to remind you that fitness is a part of your overall well-being, and we want you to break down any barriers that you may have to fitness by coming into a judgment-free zone and getting all of those feels after a great workout. And music can actually help you as well. 
because mu music helps you to boost your energy and mood by rhythms, lyrics, cadence, and all of those things that power you through. And because of that, we are super excited to announce our partnership with three-time Grammy Award-winning artist, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and fitness enthusiast herself, Megan the Stallion. And she's gonna help us marry music and fitness in a fun and unique kind of a way. And we want everybody to join in on that fun because we've created cool AR filters, charitable co-branded items, and we've got full-length workouts in our app inspired by Megan herself. All you gotta do is go to motherishere.com. And oh, by the way, when you come into a Planet Fitness, I want you to remember the golden rule when you start your journey in 2024. Before any great workout, you got to start with a great dynamic warm-up to get your blood flow into the muscles to offset possible injury. Then, I want you to combine your strength and cardio into the most robust fitness experience possible and have fun. And lastly, and please don't forget this one, you got to stretch after every workout to help alleviate some of that soreness. And if you want to come into 2024 and really power things through in the right way, do so right now until January the 12th for just 24 cents down, $10 a month with absolutely no commitment. Remember, this year is your opportunity to shine the brightest on your stage and defeat low energy together. And for more information, go to planetfitness.com. Thanks, Teddy. We'll have all that information on our website at dailyflashshow.com. Welcome back. You know, suicide claims far too many lives and often individuals actually suffer in silence. Joining us now during Suicide Prevention Month is Dennis Gillen. He's from Half a Sorrow Foundation. Their mission is to improve mental health by promoting real conversations. Dennis, we welcome you back to the show. Uh, for those that might not be familiar, kind of give us the backstory behind Half a Sorrow Foundation. Sure, I started this foundation. It's based on a Swedish proverb that a shared joy is a double joy. A shared sorrow is half a sorrow. And I go on stage and I share the sorrow that I had because of suicide, not once, but twice. I lost my older brother, Mark. And then 11 years later, I lost my younger brother, Matthew, both to suicide. You know, uh, it's such, you know, there's so much misconception about, about uh, suicide. And I'd like to get uh, your, your take on it. A lot of people say it's a very selfish act that they, that they, that they have done, but what they kind of forgetting about how much in silence they've been in. And, you know, you travel around speaking in front of large groups. What do you want people to take away from your speeches and understanding about what suicide's all about and the prevention of it? Sure, the uh, great question. What we're really trying to do, I go on stage and I'm vulnerable. And when I want to show the audience, it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to re you know, recover from these tragedies. You, know, you have a life um, and it's not all Skittles and unicorns. I'm sorry, I have to be the one to tell you that, but yeah. it's okay not to be okay. That's what I really want them to take away from. I'm more like a patient advocate in a sense. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm a guy that was bobbing through life and this happened. And I want the audience to, to, to gather that information and say, you know what, if I'm not feeling well, I need to go see somebody. And I, I try to chase as many people as I can into mental health professionals. And that's where the real conversation starts, not the suicide prevention part. We want to talk about mental health early and often. Yeah, because it, it, obviously the mental health is what drives them to that point. And it's something, thank goodness, it's not as taboo as it used to be, where you never talked about this. You never, I mean, the, the term shrink, I don't know, you know, you didn't want to go to talk to somebody about that. And there's so many different places and people realize the value of it. But there's some things that we can do within a family, within maybe a corporation, or even with ourselves. What can we actually do to actually help combat this mental health crisis? Well, the first thing I, I like to do is when I go over risk factors, warning signs, be aware, have your head on a swivel. And especially in the workplace, you know, you're with these folks eight, nine hours a day. Know what you're going to see them on their best days. You're going to see them on their worst days. Just know the warning signs and don't be afraid to step in. You know, if you see some, someone going south, say, hey, are you OK? And like truly, truly mean it because it comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of love and step in before they step out. I'd rather you embarrass yourself than be a pallbearer. Oh, so wow. yeah. that's what I'm trying to promote. You know, Dennis, I can imagine that. And just even saying, just stopping for a second, if maybe all that person might need is like, are you okay? Just somebody, because they might feel lonely and they feel like no one cares about me. And just that simple question. And I said, you know, you, it might feel embarrassed, but that's what that person might need. What's some other suggestions that you can give? Maybe just easy ways to be able to help promote uh, mental health awareness and, and getting help along the way. 
Yeah, the first thing I, I like to do is promote, you know, talking about it yourself. You know, self-care is not selfish. There's only two people I speak to when I go out and, and, and talk to a large audience is one, you may be around somebody who's having a mental health uh, crisis, but the other person I'm speaking to, it may be you. So be self-aware too. And I think you have to be your own advocate. When my older brother, Mark, died, he was so close to saying something to somebody. He pulled in their driveway and then he backed out. If he gets out of the car, Mitch, it's, it, and he tells that person, I'm not doing so well, it changes everything. You have a different guest today. I'm not, I'm not sitting here. Um, but don't be afraid to raise your hand. Don't yeah. be afraid to say, that person's me. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. You know, you said about vulnerability. How can we get rid of the stigma that vulnerability is a weakness? Oh, vulnerability is a real strength. And I'll tell you a story real quick. Is a, a young man, um, I was at a doing a, an event and a young man leaned over to another guy and he said, that guy on the stage who's talking about me and I was going over warning signs, he goes, he's talking about me. I am so proud of that dude for saying that. Yeah, that's cool. Because he, 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 he was strong. He said it to somebody. Yeah, you know, and, and if we can get that, and I think you find a lot of it in, 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 in uh, men that are afraid to show that vulnerability, but I think once you understand it, that it's saying that you're actually, as you said, as a strength, because you're, you're working on yourself. And if we turn that around, it really turns into a, a lot of, you know, great conversations like this as well. Dennis, folks want more information, where can they go? They go to my website, halfasorrow.org. Right, you know, everything you need about know about me is right there. Dennis, very important information. We'll have that on our website, dailyflashshow.com. Everything we talk about on the show is on our website, and you can visit it anytime you like. It's dailyflashshow.com. More after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. Actor Jamie Foxx stars in a new movie based on a true story. It features the story of a personal injury attorney who gets involved in a case involving a chain of funeral homes. Mm. This is today's must-watch movie, The Burial. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, how y'all doing? For all y'all that don't know who I am, my name is Willie Gary. Willie Gary. Willie Gary. William Gary. Never heard of him. Litigation is war. It's a battle. Bam! And I'm not talking about no bull I'm talking about some John Card Van Damme kicking Truth is, I may have gotten myself into a lot of trouble. I've been your lawyer 30 years. We can find a way out of it. You've never sued anybody before in your whole life. This fella tried to bully me out of business, and I don't think I should be expected to stand for it. Mr. Gary hasn't lost a case in over 12 years. You suggesting I hire this guy as one of my lawyers? Y'all come on in. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Gary. Let me introduce you to my call, Red. How do you feel about working with black folk? I suppose I am a little prejudiced. Mm. Did you meet my team? I'm Chris. The shot. That's a Douglas. Gentlemen, he's suing us? A half a billion dollar corporation. So how much money y'all trying to get? Eight million. That ain't enough money. One hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this clown he's hired as a lawyer? You're a fighter, man. What made you want to do it? Because he tried to mess with the one thing that means the most to me in life, being able to leave something behind for my grandchildren. Let's play some music. Sun is shining, sky is blue. Her name is Mame Downs. Graduated top of her class from Harvard Law School. Uh -huh. They had a nickname for her around the office. The Python. I wouldn't get too used to me being kind to you, Mr. Gary. Once we begin that trial, I'm gonna destroy you. Well, can't you see that we're golden? We don't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning this case. Just, just trust me, okay? I, I, I may have found something. What does it feel like to be some small-time nobody on the verge of bankruptcy? You have been trying to turn this into your own one-ring circus. I got my damn life on the line. I know that, Jerry. Did it ever bother you? Oh, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy. I'm oh. your honor. Hey, hey, wait, wait. What's my... I can't split the pole. I can't split the pole. Now, come on, Doc. From all of us, thank you for spending time with us. Y'all be good. Be good, everybody. We'll see you next time Bye -bye. on Daily Flash.